Hey there, how you doing? I hope you're doing good. The, the question today is, do you know for sure that whenever you die, you'll go to heaven? You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Ten out of ten people die. Now, do you know for sure that whenever you die, you'll go to heaven? So one day we're going to die, but the Bible says that after we die, we're going to be judged. Do you know what standard God's going to use to judge us? You know, in a generality, God's going to use the Ten Commandments to judge us. The Ninth Commandment is you shall not lie. I'm going to use myself as an example. The Ninth Commandment says you shall not lie. How many lies have you told in your whole life? You know, you're looking at somebody who couldn't count on every hand and foot in the whole city the amount of times that he's lied. How many times do you have to lie in order to be a liar? Well, I mean, you only have to lie once. But you're looking at a liar. I don't know how many times I've lied. You know, another one of the commandments is you shall not kill. Now, I've never killed anybody. Have you ever killed anybody? Look, I've never killed anybody, but... The Bible says, Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer. This is First John chapter 3. And verse 15, Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So to God, hatred's murder. See, God, man, he doesn't look at things the way that we do. Now, I can be pious and tell you that I've never hated anybody. As long as I make the standard for hatred, I'm probably okay because I set the standard too high, so high that I can't meet it. Therefore, I've never hated anybody. But you know, God, he looks at things differently than we do. The Bible says, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's in Matthew chapter 12. Of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in your heart comes out of your mouth, unless you're really careful. Now, if you've ever gotten upset with somebody, I'm sure that you know that it's pretty hard to keep your mouth shut whenever you feel something deeply in your heart. Now, Jesus said, if you say thou fool, you shall be in danger of hellfire. You see, what he was pointing to was he was pointing to the commandment, thou shalt not kill. And he's showing you that to God, hatred's murder. And the way that you know that you've hated somebody is if you got upset with somebody and called him a bad name. Now, you're looking at a guy... That if that's the standard, getting upset with somebody and calling them a bad name, being um, deemed hatred, and to God, hatred's murder, you're looking at a, a serial killer. But you'd probably go down for a, count, a couple counts of murder, too. You see, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The evidence of what you feel in your heart is what comes out of your mouth. If you say thou fool, you're in danger of hellfire. To God, hatred's murder. If you get upset and you cuss somebody out, that's a count of murder before God. You see, you're looking at a murderer. But if you looked in a mirror, you'd probably be looking at a murderer too, if that's the standard. Now, another one of the commandments is you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. So you get upset or you hurt yourself and you say, God blank, or Jesus blank, or only God knows what. See, the Bible calls that blasphemy. Now, right after he says that in Exodus 20, he says, He will not hold guiltless he that takes his name in vain. We may think that we're expressing ourselves. Um, maybe we just think that we are, um, we're just talking. God doesn't see it that way. He says that he won't hold guiltless he that takes his name in vain. I have done that. I've gotten upset and I've said God blank or Jesus blank or whatever it is. I've done that, but I'm sure that you probably have too. I don't know if you realize this, but Jesus, whenever he died on the cross, the accusation that they made in order to justify killing him was that thou being a man, makest thyself God. And they killed him because they thought he was a blasphemer. You see, blasphemy is punishable by death. 
something to think about. Now, if I were to stand before Je before God, I would stand before him without Jesus. I would stand before God right now, according to what we just said, as a lying blasphemous murderer. But you probably would too. You see, if I killed somebody and I lied about it and I stand before a judge and I say, look, I'm really sorry, I'm not going to do it again and I hope you forgive me. Sorry. I'm repentant, I'm not going to do it again. And I hope you forgive me. Am I going to walk out of the courtroom? There's no way I'm going to walk out of the courtroom unless the, the judge is corrupt. They can't let me go for murdering somebody just because I said I was sorry. You see, God's not going to let you go just because you ask for forgiveness. Now that one might not sit very well, but I'll explain. You see, God, the Bible says that shall not the judge of all the earth do right. You see, the good you can or will do, if, if you put yourself in my shoes, let's say I killed somebody and I lied about it, and I stand before that judge, it doesn't matter what I've done good. It doesn't matter what I will do good, because the good I can or will do can't make up for what I've already done. And in God's eternal courtroom, you doing something good can't make up for the multiple counts of murder that he already shown that you were guilty for. Something to think about. So, the thing is, is that if I get what I deserve, I'm in trouble. I mean, he said of the least of those, he said that he will not hold guiltless he that takes his name in vain. If he's going to make sure that that is punished, I promise you, I am in trouble if I get what I deserve. And you are too. Now, if I get what I deserve, I'll end up in hell. Now, do you know what God did so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? You see, the good you can or will do cannot make up for what you've already done. It does not matter what you do. So, Jesus. Jesus Christ. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So the Word was God. Then 14 verses later, in the first chapter of John, he says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. His name is Jesus. Jesus was God. He was manifested as a man. His name is Jesus. He lived a perfect life. The Bible says, I do always those things that please Him. Talking about Jesus. Jesus said that. And it was a true statement. The Bible says that he did no sin and in him was no sin. He didn't do anything wrong. He was not guilty of any of the things that we are talking about. Jesus Christ, he was sinless. But on that cross, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 6, that the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see, God picked up every dirty, rotten thing you've ever done wrong. He placed it on the back of his sinless son. And then the father punished the son for what you did. All my sins have not only been paid for, but Jesus Christ was punished as if he was me. Jesus Christ went down for my sins. He died for my sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. Jesus Christ, he died for our sins. He, was, he died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ, he paid for your sins. The Bible says in Isaiah 59, and verse 2. That your iniquities have separated between you and your God. The big list that we just made, and there's more of them. But the big list that we just made, that's your iniquity. That's everything that you've ever done wrong. The Bible says that your iniquities have separated between you. You're on one side of the big pile. And God, he's on the other side. And your sin has hid his face from you that he will not hear. 
Your good works cannot get rid of what you have done wrong. The good you can or will do can't make up for what you've already done. So God, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, Jesus Christ, the Bible says, He hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ, he died for your sins. He went down for your crimes. He didn't do anything wrong, but the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He took what you did wrong, the big pile. He picked it up. He put it on the back of his sinless son. Then he gave Jesus exactly what you deserve to the T. Every sin you ever committed was punished at the cross. Jesus Christ. He died for your sins. He was buried. The Bible says that thou will not leave my soul in hell. Thou will not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. You see, Jesus Christ, he died. He was buried, but he did not stay dead. His body went to the tomb. His soul went to hell. Jesus Christ, the Bible says that he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus Christ put your sin away in hell. The Bible says that John the Baptist seen Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. You see, what Jesus did on that cross, he did that so he could take away your sin. That's the very thing that gets between you and God. Remember, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. But Jesus Christ, he died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. <sighs> So that's what Jesus did. But see, here's the thing. You say, all right, well, what do I got to do? What do I need to do? Because you already told me that the good you can or will do can't make up for the bad you've already done. You know what? Saying that you're sorry in and of itself doesn't mean anything. Saying that you're not going to do, do the bad that you were doing before doesn't mean anything. Because... Doing those things doesn't take away your sin. Now, the Bible says very clearly, John 3, verse 18, He that believeth on the Son is not condemned. You see, we are guilty. We deserve to go to hell. The Bible says the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's the wage of sin. The wage is earned. A wage is is earned. You go to work, you get a paycheck. You sin, you deserve to, to die. I mean, it sounds, sounds really bad, but the, the reality is, is that Jesus Christ, he came in your place. He died for your sins. He was buried. He buried your sin in hell. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And all the while, the Bible says that it pleased the Lord to bruise him, Isaiah 53 verse 10. It pleased the Lord to bruise his son instead of bruising you. You can be made right with God. What you need to do is put your faith and trust in what Jesus did. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. How long is everlasting life? It's forever. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned. If God declares you not condemned, that means that you are no longer going to go to hell, even though you deserve to go to hell. And I do too. You know why I know for sure that whenever I die, I'm going to go to heaven? Jesus Christ, he died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. And he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. I have everlasting life because I believe that Jesus died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned. I'm not condemned. Even though I am guilty, I am guilty. But I am legally declared righteous in God's sight. The Bible says he hath made him to be sin for us. That's Jesus Christ. He became sin for us. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him whenever I put my trust in what Jesus did. He died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. God took what I did wrong. He placed it on the back of his son. Then he, he paid for my sin. And then God took what Jesus had done right. Bible says, I do always those things that please him. He had a perfect record of doing right. God picks that thing up and he puts it on me. It's imputed righteousness. He doesn't impute my sin to me anymore. I'm not condemned anymore. I 
put my trust in what Jesus did. He died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. You know, the Bible says you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You put your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That it paid for your sin debt. And God forgives you of your sins. He makes you a part of his family. We are all God's creation. We are not all God's children. We can talk about that in another, in another lesson. But, you know, the Bible says he came unto his own, but his own received him not. This is John chapter 1 and verse 13. Or I'm sorry, John chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. But to them that received him gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. So according to the Bible, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That means that he's going to live forever with God. And then he that believeth on the Son is not condemned. I'm not condemned. And you can be not condemned if you put your trust in what Jesus did. And then, I am a son of God. I am a part of God's family because I put my trust in Jesus. He says, but to them that received him, gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. The way you receive Jesus Christ, you become a part of God's family, is you put your trust in what Jesus did. The Bible says he died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. According to the scriptures, you can have your sins washed away. Your sins can be forgiven. You can be made right with God. God can legally declare you righteous. He takes what Jesus did right and he puts it in your account. He takes what you did wrong. He puts it on Jesus. And your sins are no longer imputed to you. So, do you know for sure that whenever you die, you will go to heaven? He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You put your trust in the fact that Jesus Christ, he died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. You will be saved. Paul said to the Philippian jailer, he said, what must I do to be saved? The Philippian jailer, he said, there must be something that I must do to be saved. And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do and believe are opposites. You need to put your trust in what Jesus Christ did for you. He died for your sins. He really did go down for your sins. He paid your sin debt. He was punished for the things that you should have been punished for. And you can be made right with God if you trust in him. He that, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can have everlasting life if you put your trust in Jesus Christ. Trust Jesus Christ. We are not good people. According to God's standards, we're ridiculous. Most men will proclaim their own goodness. Don't do that. There's something wrong with humanity and you need to trust Jesus Christ. He died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Hope you have a good day.